Hey, I messaged you today. I, I was wondering how are we actually being divisive? Like you're accusing us of being divisive. So I was just wondering. So why are you outside of a church instead of talking to people who are getting abortions right now? Well, I spent like seven months, almost every day, five days a week at so, the abortion clinic. Right. Right. And now you're here. I know. Well, I'm trying to explain. So what happened was, is it just crushed me so much of what was going on at the abortion clinic. I started going to Christians. I started going to pastors. I started going to everybody and saying, look, we actually need, you know, we need to preach the gospel, but we is also this, need to heal the wounds. Is this how you approach the church? I thought things were supposed to be handled within the church internally, like Paul said. Well, hey, the, the, this church, the ladies needed to use the restroom, and the leadership who took a command from another leader said, There's many times you're talking to believers. You're talking right. to the church. Right. I'm not going to go to evil women. people and say, help us end abortion. Well, what did Paul say? How did Paul say that we were supposed to handle church matters? So right. This issue. isn't an internal church matter. Yeah, this is a public to issue. To church to repent, but you're doing it externally. Right. Internal we're doing it nationally, right? Calling the church to repent because the number one cause of death is child sacrifice I in our land. That. I understand that. But what you're doing is you're showing division externally like Paul told us not to do. How, okay, so okay, what, what so do we do? Do we go inside like a closed meeting, like a skiff, a secure compartmentalized intelligence facility? I mean exactly how do we how do we do it so that it's not public when we are refused? Do you think beginning your right. your So here, here's the reason that we go to the church to ask them to repent. I heard one all in this four yesterday. sorry one in four Christian women participate in abortion. I can tell you how, okay? The number one cause of death in Texas, 60,000 a year, is abortion. There's 13,000 kids in foster care right now waiting to be adopted, but nobody wants them because they're not babies. So they'll do IVF and they'll uh, they'll adopt babies from overseas, right? So so the, the two greatest, biggest fruits That's show- That's my concern. My concern is what you're showing to those on the outside when Paul told us to handle these matters internally. Well, you're showing a church right. divided. That's the so, vision. So if there's like if there's like a hundred of you guys that all fellowship together, right, at a, at a local a local place, right. right? If there's a problem, you don't go outside of that and do that, right? You you deal with that with among your elders, right? You you deal with that within that community, right? So when they're, yes, but yes, uh, we are universal church, right? So they're all over that? the place. There isn't a pope to go to, all right. We can't go to a pope. Right. All right. Like, or go or, to the people and show them how we need to repent in front of everyone else. I agree with your sentiment, but the means by which you do it is not according to scripture. All right. So how would you say we should do it? You how do, how do you do it? No, how, how they do you they reject it. How did Amos do it or Jeremiah do it? He talked to unrepentant sinners already. No, he These was no. He Christ. was talking to people who followed God. He was talking to the Jewish people that followed God. No, no, no. no. What were the two biggest charges against Israel and Judah all the time? Idolatry, not following God, and it's also injustice, which you were also claiming. They were unrepentant. All these prophets were talking to unrepentant people. That was the right. purpose. Right. So you're we, talking to the church. You're exposing right. the church. So you think the church doesn't have apathy towards all the babies being murdered? Because we could at the same okay. time with this conversation. Well, they're, they're, yeah, that's the, the thing. The, the, look, let me. No, no, no. I said I agree with y'all's sentiment, but the means by which y'all are doing it just shows strife from the outside. Yeah, but Amelia won't have us in. They won't I talk to us, why. and Whenever we can't. And we can't. No, because no, we tried talking to them first. All right, we tried talking to Amelia first. All right, but the thing is, is this: we can't go to each 
church. Like there's 30,000 of them in Texas. Right, and this is here, this Evangelical. is what I had this conversation with yesterday with the man. He used this analogy. I'm sure you read my post. Uh -huh. He used the analogy of the burning building. He said, these churches aren't going to this burning building. Right. And we're telling them to do that. Right. I asked him, why aren't you going to the burning building? Why are you spending all your time out here when you could be helping save right. one life? Because I spent seven months at the burning building. Right. And there's so people dying. What no, is, so we go get you help. No, we go get help. We go to a, we go to a, a this place isn't where asking for help. No, this it is. is. No, it's not. I'm not condemning you. I'm not what saying you're going to hell. The views of these people. You don't know what they do. No, outside. we're doing it to the church universal. Like I don't hate anybody here. I'm not condemning anybody here. I'm not telling them they're going to hell. But your approach says that you are. No, and, no. And the reproach the, the reproach says that we need to repent. That whatever we do to the least of these, we do to Christ. But again, what did Paul say internally? This is showing that you don't go to the judges, you don't go to the public to show matters of the church. So, so do you think it's wrong for people to call, for Christians to call the law enforcement on their brothers in Christ? Do you think that's wrong? It depends on what you are doing. I don't know y'all's history. not breaking the law. It, it, it should, depends should on we, history. If you're harassing law? people who come no, out of here, so you're not answering I was all across the street. Yesterday. I got stopped halfway through the street yeah. to get a little pamphlet that I got yeah. yesterday. So, is so that it is not wrong? dangerous? It, it is depends on what y'all are doing. I don't know y'all's history. not breaking the law. I don't know your history. Okay, I don't I'm know what y'all did around here. It doesn't matter about my history. I'm saying if a Christian is not breaking the law in any way, is it right for another Christian to call law enforcement on that Christian? Would so you say that? Or, or should they, or should they go to the elders or go to because the church? I got, I got trapped should they do it? Yes. Or they should they okay. do it internally okay. within the church? If that's the your main concern is trapping me, then yeah. that's how you know that this whole motive is wrong. Right, exactly. So when he went to Emilio privately, do you, he's, he's talking about right their thing? motive. Huh? Do you think were, he did the right thing by going know. to Emilio privately? Yes. Like you I just do. said, okay, so since Emilio refused. Well, Emilio is responsible for his people. That's what a shepherd's supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a church universal. If there's I like like that. let's just say there's they're but they're each killing Jews. Handled for their sheep. Right. You That's know what, what scripture says. Okay. But in Texas it was legal to own slaves at one time, right? Right. And and the pastors there was almost no opposition. In fact, the proof shows that pastors were saying, "Hey, we can't deal with this." Yeah, because hated our it. actual, our actual members and the ones with money go to our church. You know, we can't really oppose this, right? And abolitionists stood up and stood outside of churches and town squares and places like that and said, "Look, we need to repent of this. Like they're image bearers of God. We can't do this." And to come up and say, "We got this. You, you should do this only internally." Because this is a social problem, and the problem is, is that man loves their sin, right? I agree with. Oh, I agree with your sentiment. Like right. I said, but the means by which you're doing it is not. Okay. Biblical. Well, then, will you please, within your own church, call them to repent of that apathy? We're from San Antonio, and we handle that situation. Our church functions within the authority of our church. We handle everything internally, as the local body is supposed to. Right. Whatever he, if he for some reason disregards you guys, which apparently he has a pretty on. That would be a matter of okay. It's on his hands now. He's it is on his hands. Right. It is on his hands. But so being out here over and over and over again. This is a community we live in. We're gonna be in our community, and if there's a bunch of religious leaders come to come together, we're gonna to come out and exhort them to love and good works. Like I'm not condemning them. I'm not telling you yeah, your them. approach is not. It's not welcoming. It's not like whatever. It's not. It's not like um, metrosexual lovey dovey. That's not what I was applying at all. <laughs> well, the it, 10 conversations it's, out here today, yours no. is the first one that was antagonistic every single other person no. this And it's not that antagonistic, but it is kind of, you know. Why I'm asking you to consider what Paul said about that. We do consider. Church. We do consider. That's all, I'm again, telling you to buy my script. I'm telling you to buy my script. Yeah. Do you know where Jesus went? Oh, where did Jesus go after he was kicked out of the temple? He was outside the temple talking to people. Right? Right. He was talking to unrepentant sinners. He, he We're under the new covenant. This is different. You're talking to people who believe what you believe. No, I don't agree that all of them believe. I, I, I do okay, believe I there's a false religion in Texas. But again, that's under the shepherds. What did James say about shepherds? So, so they can't preach and put it online so everybody can hear. So Paul Washer can't say, you know, I'm talking about you. I've heard, I've heard plenty of people from these communities talk about this issue before. Yeah, but you know we could make abortion illegal in one day in Texas if the seventy thousand pastors, well maybe just ten thousand of them, stood up and went to the governor and said, "Look, you need to sign the paper to make it illegal today." But again, you could have also saved a life by being at a clinic instead of being here. Yeah, but if there's instead a guy, you're worried if, about the church instead of actually okay. doing something. But if there's a guy running around shooting people, I could run around and just help the people who are getting shot. Uh, you know, or you? or I could go and get help 
and say, hey, help, we need to capture that guy shooting and we need to subdue him and we need to help these people. I could do that, you know, because if I spend every single day from now on, first of all, I just going to crush this one. But I could spend the rest of my life out there that would never make abortion illegal. That's not, I understand with everything you're saying. I, I, I fully comprehend what you're saying. I understand it. This is not the way Paul wanted the church to operate. What you're doing is outside the biblical realm. I, I it don't, is in okay. the hands of the shepherd to handle the local congregations. He gave us a systematic way of handling matters. And it was to handle matters within the church so that the outside people didn't see such division. Okay. Well, that's exactly what I expressed the other day whenever I said yeah. I used to be an atheist and I saw the same division. These guys didn't know what they were talking about because they can't even agree on one simple thing. Right. Well, we have this great... Inside so that we don't have well, to be out here in public, but we were refused to we, entry, even to go to the bathroom. We're, even, even the ladies we're in the middle of an bathroom. event yeah. and you're outside handing out flyers telling right. people in the middle of the street say hey you want to hear the gospel yeah. that's presupposing that i don't know the gospel yeah. actually no we're not asking that's people that's to really hear the gospel, gospel. i heard yeah. this gentleman over here he asked me hey you want to hear the gospel of jesus christ yeah well, i don't think that presupposes anything i, I don't think i'm, I'm as a 12 year as, 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 as a 12 year christian I am actually not past the need to hear the gospel. I understand. Yeah. Well, so if you ask me, after me, do you want to hear the gospel? I'm to go get some I'll say, yeah. yes, please, Nick, tell me the gospel. In fact, tell it to me right now. I need to hear it every single day. Will you please tell me the gospel? Listen, I agree with your sentiment. I don't agree with the means by which you did. Yeah, That's all I want to say. I, talk, I got this yesterday, threw them in the trash. I read them. You read this one? I read both of them. I had a long conversation yesterday. I've already talk through all these points y'all just run in circles y'all don't acknowledge the biblical authority to handle things with internally you want to i don't do it this I, yeah, way that's fine i don't agree that if the church if the ch if the church is apathetic towards the evil that's going on like they're killing jews or they're slaves if the church is apathetic towards it god sends people man, to cry out on the street all right to, to exhort the church you know to exhort to love and good works call to repent repentance has to start in the in the in the house of the lord you know like if godly men won't keep evil from abounding on the land like, i understand what you're saying but again that's not how paul instructed us to handle maps he did not handle you're putting on display that the church is divided that's what you're displaying here right now when a church when people see a church against a church what kind of message does that send to the people on the outside? And that's exactly what Paul told us to avoid. Yeah, the, We're supposed to be united in the gospel. Yeah, but here's here's how your argument sounds. A woman's getting raped and murdered right here. And I'm... That's not, no, 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 no. That doesn't parallel. No, it does. Illustration, yeah. Raped and murdered right here. And I go to you guys and they say, look, we got an event going on. You know, God's called us to be speakers in this event. And I'm like, no, 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 we need help over here. Please help. Do that, but let's do this too, please. And then, and they say no. And then I cry out in front of the church, help. I can't subdue these five guys myself. Help, please come help. And you say, oh, you're not doing it. You're not handling it like the way Paul would want it handled. That's so logically foolish. Like no, because they're killing 60,000 kids every year in right. Texas. And, like and how many people are at the clinics? That woman right now? Why aren't you at the clinic right now? I, of her I told you why. why. I did that seven months, five days a week and i realized right? that we needed right but how long have you been out here it's, doing this instead of doing what you're charging people of not doing how long have you been out here but you know you see the hypocrisy of no, no 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 you know we've yeah, actually I'm not charging people of being apathetic <laughs> no it's no on your hands no man. because we can be more effective by calling other people to repent and then repenting and then actually going out and helping right, right? How many and that's actually happened here you were here and you've been here several times. I heard that. Right. The guy right. yesterday, I think Matthew, told right. me several times that y'all have been here several times. Yeah, we go to all the churches. Obviously, right? we go everywhere. Working. No, it is working. It is working. Do you know what the number one plank of the Texan Republican Party was? I already heard all this. Do you know what? You know what it was? Yesterday. This happened okay. effective, didn't it? Come on. Yeah. You know, and, and like four years ago, we had one abolition society. Now we have over two hundred of them. All right, it, abolition is growing, man. People are waking up. There's a guy I've here. More, you know, I've seen more effective Seattle. work from people How? saying outside clinics, preventing deaths immediately instead of this. Well, get people to do that. People are doing that. Okay, you go to these clinics and you see how many people are there. There's Catholics there. There's very few Protestants ever there, man. I mean, I we got. I understand what you're saying. We got seventy thousand pastors in Texas. How many people show up at the clinics? I under. Listen, I understand what you're saying. I agree with what you are saying. Right. Except the means by which you're executing. It. Right. Because it's not biblical. That's but that, my final that woman's going to get final raped. authority is scripture. The woman is raped. We'll help her. You know that these people would. So don't pretend like they're not helping happen. the babies. You're not helping the babies. 
No, I am helping the babies. You're not. Uh, look, I've adopted six kids right out here. of foster care. If you're not, if you're okay. Right there, why aren't you helping her right now? Instead, you're out here. Because I can't subdue the five guys that are raping her. So I'm going and getting help. Plus, it's, plus it's legal to no, rape the woman. I'm, I'm talking about just me. All right. So okay, there's there's a biker gang well, raping those people. We're talking about all these able-bodied people who could be affected by doing right. some kind of Okay. So right now. so let's say there's a biker gang raping this woman, and us guys can't handle it. All right. So we're getting help, and it's yeah, it's legal. All we're saying is is relook at the problem. Repent of being apathetic towards this problem. But you understand why they would believe you hostile whenever you presuppose that they're all apathetic. Am I hostile towards you? No, you're not. And I appreciate that. But what I'm saying is that you're presupposing that all these people don't believe what you believe. And you're out here. And it's, it's embarrassing. It really is. We're just asking them. All right? Call their governor. No, but how many times have you been outside this church? He's just showing you, this that is yeah. twice. I think, whenever, I think two or three times. Twice. Whenever people I think. would conquer something in war, would they keep go pillaging the same town over and over and over again after they destroyed it? Well, this is a no, but it's not conquered. All right, it's not conquered, man. You've done what you could. You talked to them. No, we did times. more today. There was a guy right here that started off hostile towards us, and now he's totally repentant. He's like, you know what? I agree with you, and I need to take this back to my church. Yeah, I'm telling you, I agree with you. I just don't think this is how it should be right. done. Right. And that's based off of Paul's words himself. I agree with everything he's saying. I am anti-abortion. I am really pro-life in that sense. However, Paul wants us to do things internally because for the unbelievers outside, it looks really bad. Even Martin Luther, whenever he started the Reformation, yeah. he went to the Diet of Worms. He even but it is internal. really bad. I it understand. is really bad. I understand that. Right? But, but you have to understand what, what you're doing is that you're showing that Christians can't even agree on this one little thing. How many denominations are there? No, no, no. That's a misconception. <laughs> we can get into that all day. Uh, you know, allegedly there's 53,000 denominations, but that's not true. Right, it's all based off right, of Right, right. Like, um, the, the Calvinists can't even agree with themselves. They fight amongst themselves over, you know, whether you're... There's always going to be error in some sense. I agree right. with that. Right. But that doesn't mean that you just ignore that and do your own thing and let that keep happening. That means that you do your part to make sure that we're united in the things that matter, such as the gospel. Right. Him saying, hey, I checkmated you. That did not feel good. That's not how you do things. Well, I, I apologize on that because I'm not here to like condemn you guys at all. I'm just trying to expose the evil, hold back those that are being led to slaughter, defend the innocent, be a voice for the voiceless, you know? I understand. And I completely, I, my mother and my sister both had abortions and it was very hard on both of them after the fact is before, you know, they knew Christ. And they understand that too. We, under, we all understand the weight of that. I just, again, I think that I was on the outside of the church at one point. I saw the divisions, and it was very off-putting. I would have heard the gospel much sooner, probably, if I didn't see that division. You know what I mean? We're talking about years of keeping away from the church because of little things like this, whenever there's an actual exhortation in Scripture to tell you to, to handle everything internally in a peaceful manner. And once you go past and they don't listen, if they don't listen, I don't know the history, then we're told to let the shepherd be held accountable for how he guides his people. But, you know, abortion's been here for, like, what, 45 years? 60 million babies aborted these pastors grew up in this holocaust yeah they're okay with it man this is like but it's they're not. okay but see that's that's the problem is that you're presupposing that they're okay with it but they're not no, th all right my all pastor right. speaks against abortion almost every other i know life. but speaking about it their lips speak but their hearts are far from it because they don't do what it see, takes to make it illegal it's a presupposition that you're beginning with and that's why these people see you as hostile do you understand that right but look at the sixty thousand every year in texas man all i'm saying I agree, is i agree I all i'm saying is, is as a body like the army of god is large enough to handle abortion could take could take it out like that it really could i mean in I one day look california made pot legal you know just by signing a document opposing the federal government Texas could do it, Come on. you know, w without an issue. You know, when they said in Austin, okay, all pastors have to submit their uh, sermons to see if they're homophobic. Right. All the pastors, man, they all armed and armed and opposed it. Well, because, yeah, I agree. That separation right. of church and state, that should always be upheld. But, right? but they should do that with... It's legal to kill image bearers of God. We should we should make that illegal. They could, they could stand arm in arm. I understand. But, again, like this... I know it's unbecoming, okay? I know it's that it's, it's uncomfortable. It's not, it's not sin. It's not scriptural. It's not sin. It's, it's not scriptural for what it is. Uh, internally. I'm not, you I'm not as... You don't take things to the judge. You don't handle things publicly. You handle it internally. For the sole purpose 
of the witness to unbelievers. Well, I'm not bringing them to the judge. I'm not calling the magistrates on them. I, I know. I'm just, that. I'm I just going as close as I can to where there's a bunch of Christians. All right, and well, then, that, and then. That's my so, point. You've been out here several times, is what I've understood. I, we go to all these places several times. We go where Christians meet. This isn't like a. See, I don't see this as like a individual group of people that's outside of the 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 universal church. I just see this as a place, like this to me is just proof. Like I had one guy come out here and go, you're standing on holy ground. It's like, no, 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 I'm not standing on holy ground. This is just like blocks and I glass, saying, you know? The church, uh, the so, the right, church. so I just go where there's people that say they follow Christ, right? And I plead with them, because I can't go to evil, wicked people and go, hey, come on, help us stop abortion, right? They egg me, <laughs> literally. So you, I try to go to where people who actually like have soft hearts and have eyes to see and hear. And even if they hate me and like say, hey, I don't agree. I don't like that guy. Like, I actually don't like him. But I actually think that we should be doing something about this. Like we should. How do we not sure that do people something? Agree with and the main way we can help people end abortion is by changing hearts to the gospel. This is right. not preaching the gospel. Right. But we do both, right? We do both, right? Like like if we see somebody hurt and wounded there, like we we help them physically, right? And we share the gospel with them. If we just shared the gospel with them and walked by and left them in the gutter, that that wouldn't be very good, right? Or or if we just, you know, physically helped him but didn't care about his soul, that wouldn't be good either, right? So we do both, right? Like don't bind the wounds lightly or ignore the wounds in our community. Uh, and I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm not trying to no, corner I, you. I understand what you're saying. Like I said, my primary concern is what Paul said, and that these signs are facing towards the church. I mean, they actually that one's facing out, which is makes sense. At the same time, you're also representing someone who y'all don't agree with evidently on how you manner to handle things. But regardless, these are pointing towards the church, and that sends exactly the message that Paul didn't want the church saying to each other. And that's my primary concern. My concern is what Scripture says about how we are handled. I think the church is going to be held accountable. Oh, definitely. And it, it's very guilty right now. Definitely. Without you know? a doubt. And I care about them, and I don't want them to be guilty. Like, I actually, like, doing the work of God is really super, like, an awesome thing. And, and we're, we're more than conquerors. And we don't have to, like, this sounds bad, but, like, and I don't really mean this fully, but, like, just hide in these buildings. Like, we need to, like, go out and take dominion, right? Well, that's exactly what these people are right now. What we're talking about. I understand. Like the way I look at it is, nobody likes the light of Christ shined on them. They always like to shine the light of Christ out on everybody else. But we need to look at ourselves, and that's why I adopted six kids out of foster care. Because I was like, how many kids are there in foster care? You know, like because people say, oh, you only care about. You know my name. You call me by name, and you ignore me. People will say things like, you know, like, like when I was on the abortion clinic, they'll say things like, um, See, oh, that's that's not a good example. Yeah. What, what he just started? Yeah. Paul wouldn't want that. Yeah, well, I... Alright, so if I was out in front of a, a clinic, and this happened many times, people would say, you only care about unborn kids. Once they're born, you don't care about them. What yeah, about all the kids one. in foster care? And I'm like, huh, I wonder how many kids there are in foster care. And I found out there's 30,000 and 13,000 waiting to be adopted. And I talked to my wife, and I'm like, oh, they are right. We are hypocrites. Like, we actually could adopt them. We could adopt some. Some that could also you know? be, you know, changed through how expensive and how tedious the process is for adoption too at the same time. Well, it's not that hard. It's not necessarily that people don't want to because I, I did it. people who I, want to adopt but just can't because of all the processes. Yeah, but so I adopted six. I know the process. Okay. It's not that hard. Like if you actually like care, it's not that hard. I mean, yeah, you got to sit with a bunch of gays and lesbians who are adopting them because, and I ask, you know, the Christian social workers, why do you put them with gays and lesbians? I can't, like, I would not do that. I could not, like, as my job, take little boys and put them with two gay men. And they're like, Christians won't take them. Christians don't want them. I have to do that. And I'm like, 
And so, like, you don't hear me just talk about abortion, right? You help me talk about these kids because the max you can adopt is six, and, and that's what we have. But you help a lot of Christians who never thought about it actually think about, well, maybe we should. Because we don't adopt kids because we want bigger families. We adopt kids because they need loving homes. You know? They, like, they need us. So, you know, so I'm not just, like, harassing people. But they hate, a lot of people hate it. A lot of guys hate it. And they don't want me to talk to their wives because they don't want any more kids. They love their Sunday football. They love going on vacations. They don't want to be, you know, and they're Christians. You know, and not everybody has to do it, but the army of God's big enough to where 13,000 kids in Texas should be snapped up. Yeah. You know, and I, and I care about these kids. Like, if you met my foster kids that we adopted, they're not in the foster care system anymore. It would break your heart to hear their stories and, and how they feel about their lives now. You know, it's an amazing thing. And it's, and it, it, it evangelizing is very important. But we can't ignore these kids right. in the process. I understand. You know, so they're good. Like, God loves those kids as much as He does our own kids that we birthed. Or as much as he loves you and me, you know. So anyway, I, I did see what you wrote, and that's why I wanted to talk to you about, like, because I didn't understand your division thing, so that's why I was asking. That's essentially yeah. what I was saying. Yeah, and I, and I understand your point. And, and I, I mean, I spent a while as the church observing it. Yeah. From someone who lived in a Christian nation. They probably said that to Luther though too, right? They probably said, well, you're making the church look bad. So Stop person. making the church look bad. Come back to us All right, and let's how, work this out. All right, how did he handle it though? <laughs> First, he posted his 95 thesis on the door for review and for discussion, for debate. with the internal On the inside or the outside of the door? Outside the door. But that was the bulletin board basically that day. And then what do you do? The public the bulletin di- board. Right, but that was common. It was a normal thing back then. Why can't yeah. it be normal now though? Right, but are you doing that? Yes. No, you're not. You're presupposing that these people don't believe that. You're holding out signs. Well, look at the fruit of the land. You're assuming. Look at the fruit of the land. Like, you're probably guilty too, right? You're assuming these individuals no i'm i'm and what, what I'm, did he do he went to the diet of worms and he dressed them there right and then what did he do right. you know well he had to go on the run eventually right <laughs> so that's not the point the point is they handle it internally and jesus whenever he's left the town and they wouldn't receive him what they do kick the feet off his stuff he kicked the dust off his shoes why because yeah but, there was no but what did luther do he kept he kept up the fight he kept exposing and he kept talking to people he kept he kept outside of the church right well, eventually he just had a whole town full of lutherans and he stayed there Nick, did, did yeah. Martin Luther publish his work so that the entire public could read? No, actually, that's a myth. A bunch of kids so grabbed it and put it on the printing press, and it got around. He didn't mean it for it. So he didn't mean to publish any work? They were probably abolitionist kids. <laughs> a lot of his work was on Christian living, and some of it was on justification. He, they wanted to recount all of his works on Christian living and basics of... He agreed with a lot of doctrine of the Catholic Church, but just not justification by faith, social scriptura, indulgences, and stuff like that. I apologize if my spirit was antagonistic. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to persuade you, you know, because we're going to spend eternity together. So I, I hope that you accept my apology if I was antagonistic. But if, if we're going to be, you know, in disagreement on something, I think that sometimes it can be. That I accept way. your apology. I don't, I don't want, want to, to sound disrespectful way. either. It's just I had this conversation already, and it feels like I'm just going in circles, and I don't like that. You've been good. You, you haven't. You've been good with me, you know, so... Essentially, essentially though, I don't disagree with what any of y'all are saying. I agree with 100% what you're saying. In fact, I told... I think his name is Matthew. I keep forgetting his name. I told him that I believe that most Christians just had the label they're not really born again, and I understand that. I agree, too. And I agree with that. The church needs to have something internally where they had that revival or reformation again. It's just the means by which we're doing it. And we like, just have to repent, right? And do what the Word of God says. Exactly. That yeah. includes with everything. That includes going internally. Or whenever Jesus said that there was no fruit in the town, he kicked the dust off his shoes and he went to another town because they weren't listening. Same thing. You know? That's the way I see it. Well, we go to, we just got back from, a bunch of guys got back from Washington. We go all over the place, you know? Yeah, I think he's, he said he just got back from Seattle or something like that. Yeah, Seattle. Did you tell Nick what happened in Memphis when we went internally to Andrew and Rogers Church? I don't even know. I'm more like Homer Simpson than yeah, Jesus Christ, so, so I don't so that what happened remember. Was, <laughs> I'm like a dork. You know? Some material, not disruptive, not, not like causing a scene. Oh yeah, 
yeah, they, 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 yeah. And, we even told them we were coming. And they called happened? the cops and had us removed. Yeah. Called the cops. And the cops came and got us. I can't say anything. I don't know what happened. I don't. Yeah. I don't like basing things off of things I can't understand. I know I can hear one side of the story and hear the complete other side of the story. I don't like making any judgment calls and things like that because I just don't have the objective facts. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I understand. I don't know why the cops are called. I don't know how Agent Rogers treats the subject. I've only heard like one of the sermons. Subjects. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what I'm suggesting is that. Uh, <laughs> talk to them and yeah and I'll tell you what man the hearts like it, it's what most, is the reasoning for being against whatever y'all are doing like what do they say to you if I, if I don't, you don't well it's a myriad of things but the most common is is like it's too divisive of, of a topic like I, yeah like I know one third of uh, our congregants have had abortions it's a hard topic it's divisive um, um, you know like like this one church, uh, the director of Planned Parenthood was going there, and we were going there too. And I went to the pastor and I said, "How can she? How can she sit like across the aisle and two rows up from me every Sunday? Like, how, how how can I be okay in your church? Who I'm an abolitionist, and then she's over here and she kills babies every day. How could it was uh, like a like kind of like a community Baptist church, okay. you know? And um, I go, how can that?" be like i just don't like it my brain's gonna melt you know and i go well you guys talk to her and they said well at least she's hearing the gospel you know and i'm like you she leaves here and she feels good about herself like how can that be man like how, how can she be convicted you know and uh you know and you know i had a, a pastor here in town say don't go inside say no. um no. You know, I got like the most hated guy and the most loved, the most loved Christian and the most hated Christian in town going to my church. And I'm so proud of that. Yeah. And I'm like, you know. Well, part of that's against scripture too. I mean, church discipline has completely got out the window. Yeah. And I, and I agree with that too. I understand. Yeah. And I can see if, you, if like one of the charges is that they don't preach enough on it. They don't talk about it enough. I understand because, yeah, I can yeah. see. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. All right, Nick. Thank you, man. Appreciate you talking to me. Thanks, guys. For hey, can I give you some information on how you, how we can make abortion illegal here in Texas, please? We got it. I got it yesterday. You got it yesterday. What did you think about it? Don't